2024 is hereby called to order. Ms. Carling, can you please conduct roll call? Yes, sir. Mr. Broomfield. Present. Mr. Adams is absent. Mr. Perk. Here. Mr. Melvin is absent. Mr. Rodrigue. Here. Mr. Araby. Here. Chairman Oten. Here. Mrs. Chesson. Here. Mr. Lorraine. Here. And welcome back, President Chesson. Hey, man, how are you? Good. <laughs> Very good. If everyone would please rise, we'll be led in the invocation by Councilman Lorraine, followed by a pledge of allegiance by Councilwoman Chesson. Lord's Prayer. All Father. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will kingdom be done. Thy will be done. On, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. We would respectfully ask that you either place your phone on silence or turn them off. Uh, additionally, we'd like to remind everyone if you are interested in addressing the council, if you'd please fill out a blue form uh, in the door that you walked in and get it up to the council clerk, we'll be sure to recognize you. Although we will we'll ask for any public input on each of our ordinances, um, and then I'll remind you at this time that when we get to resolutions, uh, just be deliberations by the council before it goes to vote. With that said, and Ms. Carlin, I want to com comment. I'm glad I wasn't reading the teleprompter. August 13th of 2004. <laughs> so the reason you saw me chuckle is because as I was reading the, the date of the meeting, it says 2004. Of course, that was 20 years ago. I was uh, oh, I was only one year old then. <laughs> I wasn't even born. All right. With that said, <laughs> we move to item eight, approval of minutes. Uh, item one, I entertain a motion to accept the minutes of July 23rd, 2024, regular session. So moved by Mr. Roderick, second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Motion passed with seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item B, do we have any state and or federal legislative updates? Anyone? I don't see anyone in the audience. Brings us to item C, we have none. Yes, sir. Uh, item D, presentations and or updates. Item two, parish president to recognize the Lafouche Parish Government Employee of the Month and or WOW employees for the month of July 2024. Mr. President, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, our employee of this month is a true example of commitment and dedication her working knowledge and experience and unwavering work ethic are continuously and continuously assisting the teachers and staff in our program achieve excellence in their roles and ensure professional growth. She's used the data-driven research to introduce various programs into the classroom that are effective in delivering the highest quality of education to ensure success for the children of our Head Start programs. She's always willing to step up and assist her co-workers in areas outside of her normal role in order to ensure that the Head Start program continues to operate efficiently. Uh, she's written multiple requests for various grants, has been awarded to the program in order to introduce fun and innovative materials into the classroom, and was nominated to be a, a board member of the Fletcher, Fletcher Technical College's Early Education Committee. The staff has commented on how fortunate they are to have her as part of the team, and our employee of the month this month, if she hadn't figured it out yet, is Ms. Brooke Toops. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Brings us to item three, Mr. Matthew Morgaglio with Colder Slavin and Company LLC to discuss the 2023 audit. And you have the floor, sir. I would also ask the council as you're listening to the report um, to please uh, keep in mind the ordinance that will be coming up, actually the resolution that will be coming up to engage them um, on uh, future audits. Um, so that, that you may ask questions at the end of their presentations regarding that resolution because they do have a long drive back. Um, so it would be best if y'all can answer any questions y'all have. Get them answered now. Sorry. Thank you, Matt. No, thank you very much. I have with me Caitlin uh, Robichaud. She's one of my senior auditors on the job helping me this year. 
We're going to go through the presentation very quickly and go over some of the numbers, the reports, and things like that. Some of y'all who have been here before familiar with how we do the presentation, not much has changed. Your audit report is about 300 pages long, so instead of reading all of it, I'm just going to hit the highlights. Your report consists of three reports from us as your independent auditors and then the financial data that's prepared by management on behalf of the council. Our report on the financial statements, internal controls, and federal awards describes our responsibilities for performing that audit in accordance with professional standards, and it describes management's responsibilities for prevention detection of fraud, compliance with rules and regulations, and maintaining accurate books and records. The whole purpose of this is for us to come in to express an opinion as to whether the financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. What that means is anybody who's using this, primarily grantors and bondholders, can they look at this information, understand it, and believe in the reliability of it when they're doing their due diligence and their comparability? We expressed an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion on the financial statements, so the users that I had just mentioned will be very grateful that they can rely on this in making the decisions to ensure your compliance with the rules and regulations. As far as compliance with your federal awards, you receive a substantial amount of money from the federal government on every year. We're required by federal law to come in and test some of the grant programs that you get. We look at those for the rules coming down from Washington, D.C., and we noted no non-compliance that was material to the programs that we tested. So that's considered a clean or an unmodified compliance opinion. Um, in looking at some of the financial laws, rules, and regulations that we do, we look at stuff from the legislative auditor and other reporting requirements, and if we note any non-compliance Compliance. We'd mention it here. There was one issue with the Head Start program that we ran into this year. Some of that is the responsibility of the Head Start that runs out of Dallas and Washington, D.C. They changed a lot of the reporting requirements and weren't very clear on the instructions. They changed some of the deadlines, the due dates, and some of the reports. So the information presented to the Head Start program was true and accurate. It was just delayed slightly from when it was officially statutorily due. Um, those reports were filed, and as I said, they were filed accurately. It was just a timing issue. They were about a week or so late. Management put in some procedures to double check that, follow up with the grantors themselves out of Dallas to ensure compliance with those. So they're going to get ahead of it a month or two before it's supposed to be due in case Washington decides to change the rules on them again last minute. As far as internal control issues that we may have run across, we had no issues there. All the controls were, were, were properly followed for the parish. As far as dollars and cents, we're going to hit some highlights very, very quickly. Um, as y'all are aware, you have a very, very large budget. Your total revenue from all of your different funding sources was about $84 million this year. Your total expenditures on all of your budgets was $110 million. This is all of your funds, all of your operations, and it left you with an ending fund balance of $179 million. Of that 179, about 100 million of it is debt that y'all had issued in the past that you're sitting on when, in case FEMA doesn't meet the obligations, in case there's timing delays, that funding is available so that y'all aren't delayed on the projects. Until that happens, it sits in your fund balance. Hopefully it gets returned to the bond company. If not, it's gonna be used to fill up those FEMA programs. Where did you get your revenues from? Your key sources of revenue of that $80 million, Avalorum taxes made up about $20 million. Your sales tax made up another $18 million. Your federal sources was $21 million this year. Um, and your state sources came in at another $7 million. The rest of it was rounded off by miscellaneous local dollars, other grants, and things of that nature. You spent primarily 37% of that money on public works roads, bridges, drainage, those sorts of things, and an additional 14% on capital outlay. And that is the actual infrastructure that is permanent. Building improvements, repairs to the roads, to the bridges that are permanently affixed to those structures. Um, and then 10% on general government, health and welfare, and debt service. There was some in and outs this year with refunding some bonds and reissuing some new ones. We treated that as all debt paid because that old debt came off the books and that made up about 19% of what you totally spent this year. The primary fund that y'all have control over is your general fund. So that makes up a small piece of the pie. All of your other funds are what we call restricted or dedicated. It's either sales tax and it's for a specific purpose or it's grant money that can only be spent in certain ways. Your general fund is your catch-all. It allows you flexibility with where you go. Any shortfalls that happen in other funds or programs comes out of the general fund. You have the most flexibility with that. So we like to focus on some of those numbers. Your total revenues and transfers for your general fund 
fund was about $11 million. Your total expenditures was about $17 million. And that left you with an ending fund balance of about $3.4 million. Over the past two years or so, you had built up surplus in your general fund, primarily from a lot of COVID money that had come in. Y'all are finally able to spend some of that from the general fund on the, the COVID grant opened up some of the restrictions over the past two years and allowed y'all to use that money for many other sources. So your general fund was able to provide more benefit. That's why we see the higher expenditures. It's using that grant money that you had received. Your key revenue sources for your general fund, ad valorem in your general fund, was about $2 million. Licenses and permits was about 2.6. Your state revenue was about 2.6 also. And your gaming and alcohol taxes rounded out about another $1.3 million of your general fund. So that's where that money came from. Where did y'all end up spending it? In your general fund, you spent about 50% or $8 million on professional services and benefits. Employees, payroll taxes, retirement, health insurance, those sorts of things. You did have to transfer out about $2 million to other funds to cover some shortfalls and other specific projects in that area. Your professional services was about $800,000. Feeding of maintenance of prisoners was your other largest source of another $800,000. Those are the key expenditures that you had out of your general fund during the current period. This is a quick, quick snapshot of your 300-page audit report. I know I went through it very quickly. If anybody has any questions about the presentation or the numbers, I'm happy to dive into that now. If not, that's all I've got. Yeah, I'll just comment. The numbers continue to be wacky based because of COVID and because of Hurricane Ida and will be for probably another year or so. Yes, we're not going to see any of that level out. We had some big, big fluctuations with the hurricanes. As the chairman said, um, you went one year with no property tax money coming in, and then the next year had double property tax money. This year, you're getting back to normal, but not quite everybody has recovered, so the assessments are all over the place. Hopefully, that sales tax, these federal COVID dollars, and some of the hurricane dollars are going to start to wind down in the next two years. Unfortunately, it's going to take two to three years before the financial numbers level out to what we could say is this is where you consistently should operate. There's just so much going on with COVID and hurricanes all hitting at one time that it really makes the numbers all over the place. Typically, you don't have $100 million in your fund balance. That's just not normal. Yeah, I'll also comment that any council member is welcome to engage uh, Matt on the report or any questions. Uh, he's very available. <clears throat> I know he come here and, and meets and offers the time to explain this stuff, and it's it's a lot of data, it's a lot of information. So I, I do appreciate your time uh, breaking it down into layman's terms, especially for me. Um, and I, I will ask again if y'all just refresh your memories on resolution and number 18, if y'all got any questions, that if y'all may want to throw at them right now before they head back north. Everybody good? All right. Very good. Much appreciated. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all very much. Safe travels. Have a pleasant evening. Okay. Next on the presentations and our updates, we have a presentation from our tax assessor. You have to turn the mic on, Wendy. Okay. Hi, my name is Wendy Thibodeau. Mic's not on. It's still, no, it's not on. There you, there you go. go. Yeah, I'm so technical. <laughs> and I'm doing PowerPoint, so yeah, I'm out red, of my comfort zone. The red light zone. means go. I'm just letting you know. I'm out of my comfort zone, so y'all got to be patient. <laughs> um, my name is Wendy Thibodeau. I'm the Lafouche Parish Assessor. And I wanted to come speak before you and uh, to the public to let them know kind of the preliminary numbers for the 2024 Avalorum uh, tax year. Um, all right, pointing at you. Look at me. So, according to the Louisiana Constitution, 2024 is a reassessment year. I have made all of the adjustments to values according to local sales costs and market trends. 
um, all notice of value letters have been mailed. Uh, we just put our last batch of letters into the mailbox uh, yesterday, so everybody should be receiving their notice of value letters uh, within the next week or two, according to the post office. If you haven't received your letter, um, my website is up to date with the current tax roll, the numbers according to those letters. You can go on my website and check your values on there. This is a sample, an example of what your notice evaluation letter, this is designed by the Louisiana Tax Commission. Uh, the most important thing on this letter is the total, uh, the total, it would help if I had my glasses, the total fair market value. That is what my office is saying that your property is worth in totality. So I just want to let the public know and the council know that that is what I'm saying your your property in totality would be worth if it was for sale on an open market. If you have any discretions on that or if you have hurricane damage, that's not included in this. I call my office and we'll go through the steps in order for you to make those adjustments with documents you need to send in to do that. Uh, my office is not responsible for the taxes. I am only responsible for the value. That is why the taxes is not, the tax amount is not on this letter. I am only responsible for the value of property. That's it. Oh, I was supposed to do the part. Okay, so this right here, after I ran all of the totals, Lafouche overall had a decrease in value. So let me pull that up. I'm going to go over some of these numbers. So the total assessed value for 2023 was $871,592,927. In 2024, it was $860,775,796 for a $10,817,131 decrease in overall value. And up here I also have like Thibodeau had a $10 million increase, Lockport had a $245,000 increase, Golden Meadow had a $295,000 decrease. Um, what this does, and this is in the Constitution, this is not an assessor uh, process, this is in the Constitution for Louisiana, that if your tax base in a reassessment year is lower than what your tax base was in the immediate prior year. So that means if 2024 was lower than 2023, that the millage rates will increase in order for the districts to receive the same amount of money. Typically what we have in Lafouche is we have an increase in tax base, so the millage rates are reduced according to the Legislative Auditor's Office in order for the same money to be generated. Well, the same is true, holds true, if the opposite happens. And that is what has happened in the majority of the districts in Lafouche Parish. Out of 54 taxing districts, only 12 rolled back, and the majority of them were in the northern part of the parish. Every other district received a loss in tax value and therefore their millages increased. So in the second part of this uh, table, what I did is I took the taxpayer's liability parish-wide. So in 2023, the liability, the revenues generated that the taxpayers paid was $106,511,512. In 2024, with the lower rate, if the districts went for the lower rate, what they levied last year, the parish as a whole would receive $105,056,935. If everybody rolled their millage rates forward and levied the maximum what the legislative auditor said to, that they can, it would generate 108617908 And the reason why those two numbers aren't the same is a little bit increased is because the districts that received an increase, they would be more than double in their millage rate, if that makes any sense. It would generate a little bit more money. The difference in that would be three million. We would be taxing the public 
$3,723,827.96 more in addition to if we levied the higher rate. Okay, it's not working now. Can you hit it? I like James. All right, so what this table is right here is I'm going to tell you the categories that we took decreases in. And you got to follow me because it gets a little bit complicated. So we took decreases in aircraft, drilling rigs, oil and gas surface equipment that has to do with pipelines, any oil rigs, so forth. Subsurface equipment, the same thing. Leased equipment, watercraft offshore, and watercraft onshore. That total for all of them totaled a $64,503,153 decrease in value. Okay? Just watercraft alone was $54,186,050. The second part of this is the increases. So what happened is we had a $64 million decrease in value, but because it was reassessment and I revalued all of the commercial property, residential improvements, lots, personal property, machining equipment, leasehold improvements, pipelines, all of those received increases. So what it did is it made that loss less. It went from $64 million to uh, almost $11 million. The reason why I'm bringing this up is that these categories, I do not foresee this increasing substantially to make up these losses. And that we have to, as a parish and as taxing districts, we need to be more vigilant and realize that if these categories that I just named, they have a decrease in value, the millage rate is just going to spread the bill to who's left, which means your homeowners, your small businesses, everybody that's left, because the millage rate is going to increase and adjust so that, they, that the districts collect the same amount of money. Um, <coughs> where am I at? Oh, there we go. Okay. So once I gave all of these numbers to the legislative auditor, she, I say she, but the office went and they adjusted the millage rates. That is the legislative auditor's role, not my role. That I have nothing to do with that that's set by the Constitution. These, I know it's small, but I'll make sure that my office emails all of this to you all, and this is available to the public if they want this. These are the individual districts, and it shows the districts, the millage that was levied in 2023, the adjusted millage rate according to the decrease or increase in their district, the tax base, the adjusted millage rate, and the difference in those two millage rates. Okay, so some of them were, had an increase and their millage rate went down, some of them, most of them went up. If everyone levied the maximum that the legislative auditor said we can levy, we would be adding 32.32 .32 mills in addition to what we already have on the roll. Now, not everybody's going to pay that 30 mills. I'm just saying in totality, we would be adding 30 mills onto the roll, 32 mills. Okay? That's real dollars out of people's businesses and po pockets. So what your role is a taxing district and all of the taxing districts in here is that you have to make a decision on whether you are going to levy the adjusted rate, which would be higher in your case. Almost every one of your districts that you were in charge of, the millage rates, the legislative auditor rolled them up. You took a decrease in the, in the value. But you do not, not you or any district out there, that doesn't mean you have to levy that maximum rate. You can levy anything from zero to what the legislative auditor said your adjusted maximum rate is. And what I am 
I'm pretty much begging, not just these districts that you were in charge of, but I'm begging all of the districts in Lafouche Parish to be mindful. This is people's money. And in compacted with the insurance premiums that are skyrocketing and just the downturn of the oil and gas industry, this is a real hardship. And you can be good stewards of the tax dollar. You can. Levy what you need, not what they say the max you can have. And so this is an example on this. I, I just want to kind of put it into real assessment. This assessment right here is a property that is frozen. Okay, If you look at the green highlighted, two green lighted numbers. The top green number is the number that uh, I'm responsible for. That's their 2024 value. If you look at the bottom green number, that's what their total assessed value for 2023 was. As you can see, it's the same number. I have not changed that value. The reason why is because this person is frozen. I cannot touch their value. But if every district levies the maximum they can, this person's tax bill is going to go up $120.42, even though I did not touch their value because of the millage rate, not because of the value. I have no authority over, that, over the, the millage rate. You all do, along with the other 53 other districts. I just want to put this and explain it to y'all because this is what I'm going to get calls for. And I am going to tell them that I did not touch their value, that the, the districts raised their rate, not me. And if you look, this is a 65 freeze. So this could be a person that's 70 years old on a fixed income, and we just increased their property taxes by $120. I have been preaching this since 2015. If you all were here 10 years ago, this is exactly what I was telling you all with the faucet. This is exactly what I predicted was going to happen, and it's here. I begged you all, well not just you all, but all of the districts, to be mindful of this. Only levy what you need. If you needed 200000 for a fire truck, levy to 200000 Save your money. It's not what we want right now. It's what we need. And you heard your CPAs right before me. It's all over the place. And they didn't even acknowledge the downturn in the oil and gas industry. And that is compounded with insurance, the hurricane, COVID. It's all coming to surface right now. So if you want to look, OK, James, that's your cue. So if anybody wants to check their assessment, they can go to my website and they go on the property search tab and they can look up their assessment and see what their taxes are, the millages, um, what their value is and the difference in that. My open book period is from August 29th to September 13th. That is for anybody that has any issues with their value, not their taxes. Any issues with their value, they this is the legal dates that they I am obligated to address those. I also want all the districts to be aware of that you have to let me know by September 1st whether the district is rolling forward or not. Every district will be put on my Facebook page that is rolling forward with the district, the contact person, the phone number, the location, and the time, and the date of the meeting that they will have to roll forward. I believe that the public has a right. If it's going to increase somebody's person's bill $120 without even touching the value, I think they have the right to know where y'all are, uh, where the districts are at and where they're meeting. And that if they are that truly upset about it, that they have a right to hear their, their voices to be heard. So if anybody has any questions, I'm ready for you, Daniel. <laughs> I can't leave you speechless, Boo. There's no way. Um, give me a second. I just want y'all to be aware because it is going to be coming up 
with y'all and y'all districts and y'all are responsible for the majority, not the majority of the millage, but the majority of the districts. Y'all have 19 districts that y'all oversee. The school board actually has the highest millage rate. Mr. Arby. Wouldn't it? Yes. <clears throat> the watercraft. That's a thing of the past. <laughs> I just want to put this out here. When you have legislators that I will not name, that are trying to exempt watercraft, and you have other legislators that are trying to exempt inventory. I want you to understand that they're talking about $170 million that we will have to make up for in millage rates. So one of the districts here in Ward 11, that's your district, right? You have Bayou Blue? Yeah. So part of your district has watercraft. It's mostly on the intercoastal the barges and so forth. Last year, you had $10 million worth of watercraft value in your district. This year, because the barges move, they it was about 65 barges, now it's 35 barges. You lost 30 barges. But in those 30 barges, because you lost some barges and that the barges that are there are stacked and they're not working and they get obsolescent, it went from $10 million to $3 million. So it's seven million dollars that your district had to make up. Now, the fire, I'm gonna use the fire district as an example. They have 16 mills in their fire district. By the grace of God, it is a multi-parish district. If this would have been a standalone district, meaning that it didn't cross the Terrebonne line, to make up that seven million dollars, that 16 mills would have went from 16 mills to 49.26 mills. 40, for that one district. That's not all of these other districts. It's one district. But because it was a multi-parish and the Terrebonne side is bigger than the Lafouche side, meaning they have more people paying the bill that they made and they had an incre increase on that side, the watercraft isn't on that side. They just increased that it made up for the majority of our loss and their millage went from 16 mills to 17.7. I want y'all to, to hear what I said. That was $7 million and it went from 16 to 49. Can you imagine what our millage rates are going to be if we exempt $170 million? That's why I asked the question. Thank you. <laughs> but now they want inventory too. Watercraft in inventories. Uh, Inventory is $50 million right now in Lafouche this year, preliminary. So I think you partially answered one of the questions I had, which was our neighbors, what our neighbors are looking like uh, versus us. His watercraft's down too. I don't know how much, but I, we had a meeting and he did tell me that his watercraft was down. So, I mean, is, is, for instance, Terrebonne Parish and St. Charles, are they looking, seeing uh, millage going up? Or? Can't compare us to St. Charles. I'm just saying, just in general, no, though. No, St. Charles had a huge Surplus. increase and their millages are like, I don't know, they can roll them back 20 mils or something like that. Okay. Like it's crazy over there. Okay. Terrebonne is more like us, but I don't, he, I didn't, I don't think he had a loss like we did. We just have the majority of the watercraft and you know, it, it's, it's scary and I, I can't even imagine that ladies, that ladies bill that had the 65 freeze. I mean, I can't even imagine adding 49 mils to it, much less what $170 million would be. Right, triples. The next question I have is you mentioned September 1st, rule forward or not for the districts, but I know you have these earlier deadline dates and that when they have to, have to advise. Normally it's, it's earlier in the year that they have to advise about rolling forward, so that's not the case because it's a reassessment year? No, 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 it's a reassessment year, so I don't have those totals for you like I do every other year. Reassessment year, if you look back, it's late every year. Okay. I, I thought I was running really late this year, but I'm not, because I sent out those letters on August 5th last year, the exact same day. And uh, I also want to let you know that part of the decrease in the watercraft values is that the last administration under John Bell Edwards, the tax commissioner, um, he adopted watercraft tables. So that's how I value the watercraft. He adopted the 2008 values, not 2023 values. I want you to understand that. So right now I'm assessing vessels at a 2008 cost, not a 2023. And so when these vessels, not only is it at a 2008 value, but they're stacked. So I'm only getting, they get 90% obsolescence when they're stacked. 
So I'm only getting 10% of a 2008 value, not 10% of a 2023 value. Now, do I think that it would, I mean, it might have made up for $10 million, to be honest with you, to where we could have broke even. I don't know. I, I, didn't, I, don't, I try not what if and. Right, but going back to my question was September 1st. Yeah. So these districts, if they meet once a month and they have to take a vote and, and to do this, it's, it's almost like it's late in the game. And so I want to be crystal clear that they need to have, that if they've already had this meeting, I would think many Some of them have of already them have. had. Not many. The ones that, the um, a couple of them, like Fire District 3 had theirs. I think I have two or three. But I've already got received notification for two districts that want to roll forward. Okay. That, but that you gotta let me know by September first because I have an obligation through the state, like through law. I gotta, I gotta put that on my website. If who's rolling forward, so I have to do that by September first. I just pushed back the date. I thought I was gonna be finished with reassessment sooner, but I pushed back the deadline because I had to redo the tenth ward. I Understood. had to do that twice. Understood. But when you say in rolling forward, it's actually there would be voting to to not roll forward, right? I to advise to, you because you're gonna be rolling forward from what you just the presentation you gave. I'm not to rolling meet the forward. Millage. I'm not rolling forward. My millage went up according to the legislative auditor. I went from 2.5 to 2.53. I'm levying 2.5. So I don't have to do all of the requirements that that if you're rolling forward. I don't have to do that. I just have to put an agenda up 24 hours before my meeting with what is on the agenda and I levy that. Y'all have a little bit different because y'all have a homeroom charter. So y'all have to follow a couple of more a lot more steps than I do. But if you roll in forward, you have to follow your steps and what the Constitution dictates. So now I've just gotten a bit confused. Because <laughs> I thought you explained that the millages are going up because it's a reassessment year and we have this shortfall, so they're going up. Yes. But, but you don't have to levy the maximum. You have to decide what but you're going to levy. No, but if I take no action, if I take no action, the millage is going up. No, if you take, no. you mean, if you take no action, if you I, get if no a district, money. If a district takes no action, if they don't advise you, they're rolling forward, they don't advise you, they don't tell you anything. They don't get money. You have to take action on something. You've got to take action either way. you either got to levy, you got to levy something. Even okay. when I didn't levy any, in, right after the hurricane, I didn't levy any millage, I still had to do a resolution saying I'm levying zero mills. You have to do something. You have to. You have to do a resolution. If you're rolling forward, you have more steps to do if you're rolling forward. But if you're not rolling forward, then you can do it like you're doing every year. I, I get what he's saying. No, the, you gave a lengthy presentation about what, what the millage, the uptick in millage. Go yes. ahead, Archie. So what, what, what she said was that because we lost the value, the millage rates are gonna going to have to expand to make up that gap. We necessarily, and the districts don't necessarily have to say we're rolling up to make up that gap. We're automatically going to receive what we re received last year, but in her case, where she gets to go from 2.5 to 2.53, in that case, if, if we wanted to collect or she wanted to collect the 2.53, you would have to roll forward to do that. Yes. So that's what, that's what, now that we've gotten the numbers from her office, that's what Renita's working on now, is figuring out. You don't have to roll forward, no. Yeah, you know, you don't have to. You, no, two, we're, we're all crystal clear. I yeah. understand the two that point five three. On majority of districts, you're not going to have to roll forward. It's not going. You're not going to have to go through the roll forward process because you took a loss. That is going to be your rate. You don't have to do a roll forward. There's only 12 districts that have to do a roll forward because they actually lost. They actually increased in their their revenue. So you're just going to do it like you normally do it. I don't. I don't know specifically if any of your districts that you are you are responsible for took an increase? I don't think so. The, so the one I was looking at did. The, the specific did one, yes. Okay, okay. The one that did, <laughs> you are going to have to roll forward. Okay. Well, You're going to have to go through all of that, the box, the advertising, all of that. If you want to levy the maximum rate, I strongly would, encourage wish you to wouldn't. Wish they wouldn't. I know they wouldn't. That, if that's, it's that's the one I'm point. thinking of, so, no. Okay. And so specifically what I want to be able to tell that district is the action they need to take, which is basically just to hold steady. Yep. It's already adjusted. Okay. Yes. I got it. <laughs> Makes sense. It's very confusing. Look, I've been doing this for, for getting close to 30 years, and, I, I'm, and I'm thankful because I think I went to your office uh, what, a couple of months ago to try to go through with the treasurer. So anyway, it's very complicated, um, and y'all need to stay on top of with y'all district because it's very important. It is. No one, has, if no one else has any questions, thank you very much, Wendy. All righty. Thank much you. Much appreciate it.
All right, that takes us out of presentations and updates into item E, engineers and or architect reports. Turn the mic on, please, sir. Thank you. Good to go. All right. GIS uh, Engineering, Kevin Desarn. I'll give you our updates tonight. So our first one is the Butch Hill pump station. Uh, we're still just waiting on authorization to move forward with this. Once the money's in place, we, we are prepared to uh, advertise. <laughs> Any questions on that one? The next one. The next one is the Valentine Pontoon Bridge. We are still coordinating with DOTD. We are coordinating with them twice a week, um, phone, email. We are trying to get a response from them on how to proceed forward and what we need to do um, to get this one off center. So we will continue working on that, but other than that, I really don't have an update on this one. Sorry. The next one is the Green Bayou Freshwater Reintroduction. On um, this one, we are moving forward with uh, final design. We, we had some discussions with the DOTD team. Um, we, we do have to analyze the bridge that crosses the Burglar Rose Highway where it crosses the bayou. Um, we have to do a scour analysis. We have to do uh, an engineering report, a pretty lengthy one for them, um, to say that we can uh, excavate under that bridge and not in, uh, degrade the bridge's integrity. <coughs> but we are working that congruently with the final design of the pump station. So we should have both of those uh, going concurrently. Uh, on the waste, waste collection facility, uh, the geotech investigation identified the 10 to 15 foot thick layer of trash um, we did uh, propose a plan to excavate that material, uh, backfill it with sand. Um, so now, right now, we are working with administration on ELOS's uh, environmental impacts and get the permitting going on that. Okay, so for Hurricane Ida pump station rehabilitation, uh, the Ravenswood uh, pump station preliminary design that's kicked off so we are actively working on that um, we did receive the notice to proceed on that the first of the month uh, January 1st um, so we are going forward with that the next one is the Eunice Alamo pump station we did have this project advertised um, we ended up pulling the advertisement uh, it was supposed to open bids today um, but due to some uh, recent uh, developments at the Hamilton Street Bridge, that bridge was downgraded to three tons, which severely limited the access that the contractor would have. Um, but there is a little bit of good news there. Uh, North of Fouche, Levy District, I believe, is working on a project um, that should, should help out with that. So we will advertise that once we have some more defined um, path forward on that bridge. We'll re-advertise that project. And just can you elaborate a little bit on that? The North Lafourche Levy District is doing what? So, to my understanding, they're looking at um, culvert crossings um, right there. At this location? At at the bridge location. Or is it? Hold on. I think Dylan has a comment. Am I mistaken in that? It, Go ahead, it's, Dylan. It's going to be a, a concrete Waski slab That's bridge. It. It's going to be a, a single lane crossing, 16 foot wide. Very similar to what's there, just concrete piles, concrete pile bents, and uh, Waski slabs on the top of it. Um, it is going to be HS20 load rated when it's all designed. We are doing a project in conjunction with North Lafourche Levy District. We we have a CEA in place, but North Lafourche Levy District is spearheading the engineering because what they're doing is, um, if you're familiar with the area by T-Ball Pump Station, that levee is right up against the edge of the road. So they're going to move that road further away from T-Ball Pump Station, give a good embankment for that levee to be built on that side, and then it's also going to allow uh, use of the existing timber bridge while the new bridge is being constructed. So it's a conjunction project. Um, the parish is going to be on the hook farther bridge um, and we are involved in the design process but there's some other factors that's going into it for levy protection and they're going to tie in between the Tiwa and Ludovine banana grove levy 
Interesting. That's, that's a little bit common sense in that one, sounds like. Yes, and we're hoping to go out to bid with that in four weeks. So this was just postponed until that one does go to bid. Hopefully there's a contractor that's interested in doing the bridge and the pump station, and they can do them in conjunction. But it didn't make sense for us to go out to bid prior to um, – the bridge actually being built because it locks the contractor in with him not knowing what access routes will be available. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's just no, it's that, that bridge and that pump station is high on everybody's kind of priority yeah. list down there. And, um, and it has severe implications even with um, emergency response because it's a three-ton bridge. So those yes. homes back there, I'm constantly being called as you are. But anyway, thank you. No, thank, thank you, Dylan. I wasn't uh, fully abreast on those details. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Oh. And, and Delenn, I think half of that's yours. Half is mine, half yours, just so you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next project is the Midway Drainage and Study. Uh, again, we are actively working on this. Uh, we're performing analysis runs, uh, trying to narrow in the model. Uh, looking at that, we are hoping to have a report to, uh, to staff by early September. And then the last one is the Lockport Elevated Boardwalk. Uh, no real change here. Uh, we're just waiting on any um, authorization to move on to the next uh, phase on that. We submitted our SNR report, uh, Geotech's done, um, but we're just kind of on hold until uh, the permitting and uh, uh, staff says uh, to go forward with the uh, preliminary design. Were all the repairs made, the recent repairs? Does anyone know, is it, is it back open? Was it still close to the public? No one knows. I don't know that it was ever Yeah, they had a sign. They had a. They had it taped off. Okay. Anyway, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other engineers and or architects? Looks like that's it for tonight. Brings us to item F, public wishing to address the council, public hearings, agenda items, etc. Ms. Corleen, we have none. Brings us to item G, public hearing and ordinances for ratification. I now entertain a motion to open public hearing. So moved by Mr. Roderick, second by Mr. Perk. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passed seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Mr. Adams and Mr. Melvin. Item four, ordinance to amend ordinance 5084, amending and reenacting chapter two, administration, article three, provisions governing operations of parish governing body, section 2-103, procedures to be followed by persons wishing to address the Lafouche Parish Council during all regular and special meetings of Lafouche Parish Code of Ordinances as it pertains to deleting a is scratched out of section 2-103 and adding to section 2-103 the following language. Any supporting documentation presented and submitted for the record must be in the form of a hard copy as opposed to computer-based electronic form in amending and reenacting section 2-103 of chapter 2, thus reflecting the new code of ordinances. Moved by Mr. Pert, second by Ms. Chesson. Would anyone from the public like to comment on ordinance at number four? Mr. Ron Sapier, just state your name and address for the record, Ron. Ron Sapier, 110 Bourgeois Street, Race in Louisiana, 70394. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, President Chesson. Um, I, I know that you're the author of the, the ordinance, so maybe I'll, I'll, I just wanted to be clear for all of us to be clear, me, the public, y'all, because I come to all these meetings. So um, my question was, we saw Ms. Thibodeau give her presentation. We saw the architect and engineer give his presentation. That does not apply to them because it only applies to public wishing to address the council section of the agenda or if a member of the public would want to address the council on a specific ordinance like I am doing right now. That's affirmative. So if Ms. Carlene, 10 years from now, goes back and reviews this tape, that is affirmative. It's for the public only, because I know we have to do that occasionally. Uh, the, the reason being, though, is um, so we're, we can properly vet electronic means when it's uh, another uh, government agency, engineering, or architect reports. Uh, when the public just shows up and then they have a zip drive they want to hand to us, we have yeah. no way of vetting that prior to the to presentation. So it, we just, in order to protect our systems, and of course the council here, we don't have the means to... Um, to basically to make sure that these zip drives, we have to rely on the administration. So that's kind of like a whole other function. But that was the whole objective, is that we don't just have a zip drive dropped on us at the last minute that nobody can vet what may, was it gonna be the content on it yeah. or anything like that. In yeah. addition to the viruses, which we all are very familiar with. But yeah. yes, uh, you're, you're uh, absolutely correct okay, with that. Okay, good, because I have a virus right now in my email. <laughs> so it's basically saying that Joe Citizen couldn't give him a jump drive and the last put a minute. virus and the whole 
That's right. Thing. Okay. That's All correct. Right. Thank and, you. and I'll also say that the hard copy is, is much easier to put as a matter of record for the minutes. Yes, for the minutes. So, so there is a secondary it. part of this, too. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Absolutely. Anyone else from the public like to comment on the ordinance at number four? Anyone from the public? Last call. Anyone from the public? Anyone from the council? That being none, we'll bring it to a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Aye. Motion passes six yeas, one nay, that nay being Mr. Lorraine, two absences, that being Mr. Adams and Mr. Melvin. Item five, ordinance establishing a 20 miles per hour speed limit on Chauvin Drive, Race in Louisiana, Ward 3, District 6, Parish of the Food, State of Louisiana, providing for the placement of speed limit signs and providing penalties for the violations thereof. Moved by Mr. Araby, second by Mr. Roderick. Would anyone from the public like to comment on the ordinance at number five? Second call, anyone from the public like to comment on the ordinance at number five? Last and final call, anyone from the public wants to comment on the ordinance at number five? Anyone from the council? There be none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes with seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item six, ordinance amending ordinance number 6852 that adopted the 2024 operations and maintenance and capital budget for the Lafourche Parish Council, as well as setting the salaries of unclassified employees as provided for by Article 5 of the Lafourche Parish Home Charter. Moved by Ms. Shuss of the administration, second by Mr. Perk. Would anyone from the public like to comment on the ordinance at number six? Second call, public input, ordinance at number six. Last call, anyone from the public wants to comment on this ordinance? Anyone from the council? There being none, we'll move it to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays. Two absences, those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. Item 7, ordinance providing for a 2024 supplemental appropriation 24-008 within the 2024 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget to correct the budget for civil defense grants to and de-obligate recreation projects and increase the budget for Lockport Community Center Ballpark and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ to administer set transactions as provided for by Article 6 of the Lafourche Parish Home Rule Charter. Mr. Perk will move on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Araby. Would anyone from the public like to comment on the ordinance at number 7? Second call, public input, ordinance number 7. Last and final call, anyone from the public wants to comment on the ordinance at number 7? Anyone from the council? Mr. Lorraine, press your button. Yeah, so on right. this, the the money that uh, Mr. Adams has, he's transferring that to Lockport Community Center? It's, yeah, that's not the way I understand it. Anyone from the administration wants to comment on this? Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So as I, as I talked to T. Boo about, we're just moving some money around within recreation to balance some stuff out. We don't really need that much money in Chack Bay right now um, while we work on buying the piece of property he wants to buy. And then as we look toward 2025 with any matching dollars we have, we'll, we'll shift any money we need back around to him. Because he's he's getting, uh, isn't he getting a grant from the state rep or something? He's, he, they're, they're working on that, yeah. They're working on that? Yes, sir. It's not, I, not, not in the bank yet. I don't think there's a problem with transferring the money. I just think that he should do his project before he transfer. The community center, don't they get an, an extra millage? Yes. They do, huh? Yes. 200 and what? I have no other clue. 258 not a my year. District. So. But we talked we talk to Councilman Adams before we did this. So I appreciate you asking. No, no, no. I'm not we, saying that you know, I'm not really <laughs> against it. I just think that he should take care of his business before he decides to, because if you look at the agenda, almost every item we got is a change order. So, whatever. Thank you, Mr. Lorraine. Anyone else from the council? Mr. Perk. I did speak with um, Councilman Adams and uh, about it, just making sure he was good with it. You know, I didn't want to arbitrarily move money that he was not okay with, and he was good with it. He had spoken with the president, and um, so, you know, if he's good with it, I'm good with it. Thank you, Mr. Perk. Any further discussion? There'll be none. We'll bring it to a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item eight, ordinance approving the holding of an election in Fire Protection District Number Seven of the Parish of La Foo, State of Louisiana, on Saturday, December 7, 2024, to authorize a renewal of a special tax therein. Moved by Mr. Araby on behalf of Mr. Melvin for the administration. Second by Mr. Rodriguez. Anyone from the public would like to comment on the ordinance at number eight? Second call, public input. Ordinance at number eight. 
Last and final call. Anyone from the public wants to comment on the ordinance at number eight? Anyone from the council? There be no. We'll bring it to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. I'll now entertain a motion to close public hearing. So moved by Mr. Perk, second by Mr. Roderick. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Brings us to item H, proposed ordinances. Number nine, proposed ordinance designating a no wake zone on Bayou Dumar from Mitchell Street to the Highway 653 Bridge, Racing, Louisiana, Parasol Food, State of Louisiana, providing for the placement of no wake zone signs and providing penalties for the violations thereof by Mr. Roderick. Number 10, proposed ordinance abolishing recreation district number four board within chapter 34 of the Lafouche Parish Code of Ordinances and authorizing the parish president to sign execute and administer any and all relevant documents. Mr. Perk, for that administration. Item 11, proposed ordinance providing for a 2024 supplemental appropriation 24-007 within the 2024 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget increasing the budget for the library and Valentine Pontoon Bridge and deobligate local funding and correct the budget entry for the South Lafouche Fitness Court and authorizing the Parish President to sign, execute, and administer said transactions as provided for by Article 6 of the Lafouche Parish Home Rule Charter. Ms. Chesson for the administration. Item 12, proposed ordinance amending ordinance number 4372 that accepted the subdivision known as Shelby Estate Subdivision at Greenwood Plantation Estates into the parish system. Ms. Chesson, you're going to be sponsoring this one on behalf of the administration. Item 13, proposed ordinance approving a lease agreement between Sam A. Battaglia and Nicholas J. Battaglia in the parish of Lafouche for leasing the property located at 403 St. Philip Street in Thibodeau and authorizing the parish president to sign an executive minister set agreement and any all relevant documents. Mr. Perk for the administration. Item 14, proposed ordinance providing for a 2024 supplemental appropriation 24-009 within the 2024 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget for the LA Development Ready Community Grant Award Delta Form Boat Launch Renovations and for the agreement with the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office for the purchase of vehicles for the coroner's office and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and administer said transactions as provided for by Article 6 of the Lafouche Parish Home Rule Charter, Ms. Chesson for administration. Item 15, proposed ordinance granting a variance from the Lafouche Parish Subdivision regulations from the rear yard requirement setback reduced to five feet in Heritage Heights Subdivision Phase A, Lot 1, Block 3, 143, Rue Claudet, Lockport, Louisiana, as recommended by the Lafouche Parish Planning Commission at their July 31st, 2024 meeting. Mr. Perk for the administration. Item 16, proposed ordinance granting a variance from the Lafouche Parish Subdivision regulation from reducing the lot dimension to 5,831 square feet on Lot 2B raw land in the proposed redivision of Lot 1 and Lot 2A in Raw Land Division, Lot 2B of property belonging to Henri Boulay as recommended by Lafouche Parish Planning Commission at their July 31st, 2024 meeting. Mr. Perk, on behalf of the administration. Item 17, proposed ordinance approving the holding of an election in Hospital Service District Number 1 of the Parish of Lafouche, State of Louisiana on Saturday, December 7th, 2024 to authorize a continuation of special taxes therein. Mr. Lorraine for the administration. And that brings us to item I, resolutions. Number 18, resolution engaging the firm of Colder Slavin and Company LLC to perform the Lafouche Parish Council statutorily required audit of and for the year ended December 31st, 2024, not to exceed $71,500 and of the for the year ended December 31st, 2025, not to exceed $73,500 and of and for the year ended December 31st, 2026, not to exceed $76,000 and authorizing the parish president to sign any and all necessary documents. Mr. Perk will move on that motion. Second by. Ms. Chesson. Discussion. Does anyone have any questions? So I guess this is a three-year deal, um, and that's why they gave us the prices that they gave us. And no one has any questions on that? Would there be no? We'll move it to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. Item 19, resolution appointing one member on the Fire Protection District Number 3 Board. Mr. Lorraine for the administration. Who do you have, Mr. Lorraine? Reggie Petrie. Reggie Petrie, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. Item 20 has been deferred to the August 27, 2024 meeting. Item 21, resolution appointing one member on the Fire Protection District Number 9 Board, Mr. Araby for the administration. Who do you have, Mr. Araby? Uh, one vacancy. 
on appointment, Mr. Lance Bain. Mr. Bain, second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays. Two absences, those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item 22, resolution reappointing one member on the South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority Board. And this is going to be getting handled by, who was picking that one up? Mr. Perk? Mr. Perk, who do you have on behalf of the administration? Brian Zerang. Mr. Brian Zerang, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Adams and Melvin. Item 23, resolution amending resolution number 24-235 that appointed one member to the recreation district number one board. Mr. Araby for the administration. Mr. Araby, who do you have? Garrett English. Mr. Garrett English, second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Melvin and Adams. Item 24, resolution approving an agreement between the Parish of Lafouche and Lafouche Parish School Board for use of facilities and equipment during a declared emergency and authorizing the Parish President to sign and execute and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Mr. Araby will move on this on behalf of the administration. Second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. Item 25, resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and Pisciola and Associates Incorporated for the project titled Repairs to Parish Pump Station, small project, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said amendment and any other documents. Or Mr. Roderick for the administration, second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item 26, resolution approving an agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and Nichols State University to assist with funding for the construction of the Coastal Center and authorizing the Parish President to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any other relevant documents. Mr. Perk on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? Mr. Araby, you have the floor, sir. Mr. President. Can you kind of explain to the council and the general public what is this $500,000 going to be used for and where is it coming from? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I noticed, Mr. Arby, I, I figured out where that typo is now. So if you guys remember right, when when you guys allowed the bonding to happen of the GOMESA funding back in 2019, the Coastal Center was one of the one of the projects on that project list. Uh, the parish allocated $500,000 of that that money to be put toward the coastal center. At that point, the, the first hundred thousand we spent uh, was with a contract with with DDG, who was the design group behind that to get the project started, really get it up and running. We did some great graphics with it, and then Dr. Clune and Nichols took off with that, uh, and actually went sell it to the state and got the funding to actually build it through capital outlay and some other means. So the actual total project is not eight hundred thousand; it's actually about eighteen million dollars. Um, so. A vast majority of that is being funded by the state. The last 400,000 we have coming from GoMesa is going to be used for the programming of the facility. So the bottom floor is all going to be research, um, some applied research with the levy district, some stuff that we're working on with DU and Conoco and some other partners for some of our coastal projects, uh, as well as some exhibit space. The second floor that's being built out now is being funded completely by CPRA. And CPRA is going to have some office space in there. I think Chairman Dove plans on working out of there some uh, so he can be a little bit closer to HOMA. Um, and some other, I think, staff from CPRA will be there. So, question. I know the ground was broken quite some time back. Where are they staying? I haven't passed there. Are they in construction mode? Yeah. They, uh, most of it's sheeted, sheeted in. I think the stuff that's dry, they, they're keeping dry. Uh, the plan is, I think, January-ish. Uh, and then the exhibit space will probably be done sometime in the early spring. So I think total turnkey when we're ready to do stuff will probably be sometime in the in the early spring of 25. Excellent. Mr. Araby. You can answer my question, Archie. I was just kind of concerned about the $800,000 project and we put up 500000 of it. Yeah. So, uh, but like you said, it was a typographical error. It's an $18 million project. Million. So thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. With that said, we'll move it to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? 
Motion passes 7 yeas, 0 nays, 2 absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item 27, resolution approving change order number 4 for the projectile new rodeo arena and miscellaneous repairs to the Raceland Ag facility, increasing the contract price by $43,364.34 and authorizing the parish president to sign the minister, set change order, and any and all revenue documents. Mr. Araby for the administration, second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? There be none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Motion passes 7 yeas, 0 nays, 2 absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. Item 28, resolution approving change order number 2 for the project title hurricane auto repairs courthouse annex and old jail roof, increasing the contract price by $13,660 and authorizing the parish president to sign the executive minister said change order and any all relevant documents. Mr. Perk for the administration, second by Mr. Rodriguez. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes 7 yeas, 0 nays, 2 absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. Item 29, resolution approving change order number 1 for the project title hurricane item repairs, renovations, old courthouse roof replacement, increasing the contract price by $7,727.60 and adding 91 additional days to the contract time and authorizing the parish president to sign executive and minister said change order and any all relevant documents. Mr. Perk for the administration, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? There being none. Mr. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Sh I see your name right here. Go ahead, Mr. <laughs> President. No, I, I know Mr. Mr. Lorraine alluded to a minute ago, and I know we've been seeing a bunch of these change orders, and I just I want to make you guys aware that it's not anything that um, our architects and engineers are, are doing wrong. As you can imagine with some of these old buildings, especially ones downtown, when you start ripping these old roofs off, we find stuff that just wasn't anticipated. You know, the, the previous item was um, a hatch on a roof that doesn't meet code anymore. So once we get out there and we find the old hatch buried under some stuff, you got to replace it. Um, we're making some, some improvements to some of these chillers and uh, some things that we're being asked to do by the judges and the courthouse personnel. So it's not anything that, that I guess we didn't anticipate. Um, but we're just finding more stuff as we dig into these old buildings. So uh, projects are going well overall. We just got to get through some of this early stuff. Very good. Thank you, Mr. President. That said, we'll move it to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences, those absences being Melvin and Adams. Item 30, resolution approving change order number one for the project title recreation district number two, Milton P. Araby Racing Community Park Hurricane Auto Replacements and Repairs, decreasing the contract price by $86,940 and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said change order and any all relevant documents. Mr. Araby for the administration, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item 31, resolution approving change order number two for the project titled Recreation District Number Two, Milton P. Araby Racing Community Park Hurricane Auto Replacements and Repairs, increasing the contract price by $84,846.58 and adding 21 additional days to the contract time and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and Mr. said change order and any all relevant documents. Mr. Araby for the administration, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Melvin and Adams. Item 32, resolution approving an agreement between Lafouche Parish and the Lafouche Parish Area Agency on Aging, Lafouche Council on Aging, Incorporated for the use of buses during emergencies and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement. Any all relevant documents? Mr. Araby will move on back to administration. Second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Melvin and Adams. Item 33, resolution approving change order number five for the project titled Bio Blue Park Hurricane Auto Repairs and Replacements, increasing the contract price by $29,357.52 and adding five additional days to the contract time and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and administer said change order and any all relevant documents. Moved by Mr. Roger for the administration, second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Melvin and Adams. Item 34, resolution accepting bids for miscellaneous materials for the time period of September 1st, 2024 to August 31st, 2025, and authorizing the parish president to sign SQ and minister any all relevant documents. Ms. Shesoff at administration, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Melvin and Adams. 
Item 35, resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement between the Louisiana Workforce Commission, Office of Workforce Development, and Lafourche Parish Council, Office of Community Action for the Community Services Block Grant, fiscal year 2024, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said amendment and any all relevant documents. Move by Mr. Brumfield for the administration. Second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? Motion passes 7 yeas, 0 nays, 2 absences. Those absences being Melvin and Adams. Item 36, resolution approving change order number 3 for the project titled Hurricane Ida Damage, roof replacements to Matthews and Galliano governmental government complexes, increasing the contract price by $148,892.32 and adding 84 additional days to the contract time and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said change order and any all relevant documents. Mr. Lorraine for the administration, second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is there anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Adams and Melvin. Item 37, resolutioning in support of including Lafourche Parish within the boundaries of the Chafalaya National Heritage Area and authorize the parish president to sign, execute, and administer any all relevant documents. Mr. Perk will move on behalf of the administration. Second by Mr. Araby. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Shessel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to thank the, the group from the, the National Heritage Foundation that's here. Uh, for some reason, years ago when this program was created, we were left out. Uh, go figure. Um, so we've been working with our congressional delegation. Huge thank you to Majority Leader Scalise, who's been carrying this with us, along with Congressman Graves, uh, who has done the authorizations year after year. So uh, we're proud to be a going to hopefully get, get into this program and allow us to tap into some additional grant funding to help out the parish. Yeah, and I will comment, each council member should have a little packet uh, that talks about the uh, Chaffalai National Heritage Area. So and we thank you for being present tonight. If there's no further discussion, we'll bring this to a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Melvin and Adams. Item 38, resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement between the Fouche Parish Government and the Planners Design Group, PC, for the project titled Emergency Pump Station Rehabilitation Repair and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said amendment and the all relevant documents. Mr. Perk will move on behalf of the administration. Second by, second by Mr. Araby. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. Item 39, resolution accepting the bid from Knock Hands Painting and Waterproofing in the amount of $1,201,960 for the project titled Hurricane Ida Interior Repairs Matthews Government Complex and authorizing the Paris President to sign, execute, and administer an agreement and ERM documents. Mr. Perk will move on behalf of the administration with a nod of his head, and Mr. Roger will second that motion. Any discussion? Mr. Araby, you have the floor, sir. Mr. President, what they painting? <laughs> that's that's fourteen carat gold on walls. That's right. No, that's just the name of the company. So this is the, the, they're gonna they're gonna. It's the, the renovations to this building. So the back end where DPW was, it's still gutted from the water that came in when the roof peeled off. Um, and then all the other associated interior work that needs to happen. Okay. Yeah, just it's, that's just the name like of the company. Of money, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. No, it's good. I think it's very important for everyone to realize that because $1.2 million of paint and waterproof would be pretty expensive. Any further discussion on this one? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences will be Councilman Adams and Councilman Melvin. Item 40, resolution accepting the bid from TD Construction in the amount of $1,239,978 for the project titled Lockport Community Center Ballpark and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer an agreement and any all relevant documents. Mr. Roger will sponsor on behalf of the administration, second by Mr. Perk. Any discussion? No. None. We'll bring it to a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams. That's primarily uh, grant money. Item 41, resolution accepting the culvert bids for the time period of September 1st, 2024 to August 31st, 2025, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer any all relevant documents. Ms. Shessoff for the administration, second by Mr. Roderick. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes seven yeas, zero nays, two absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams.
Brings us to item J, Parish President, Department Heads, Directors, or Mayor's Reports, Presentations, and or Updates. Item 42, Department of Public Works Representative to present a report. Dylan, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, sir. As always, starting at the Thibodeau Field Office, this is Pine Needle Street Outfall, repair to wash out of the outfall. Abbey Extension Outfall, swept outfall. Paula Drive, cleared trees from roadside ditch. Moving to Choctaw Field Office, the Chack Bay South Levee Canal, Clean Borough Canal. Moving to the Bayou Blue Field Office, Carol Dean Street, swept roadside ditches. Francis Street, replace collapsed driveway culvert. Maple Street, remove vegetation from the ditch. Dewey Street, swept roadside ditches. Smith Willow Drive, clean culverts. Marcel Street, replace collapsed driveway culvert. Moving to Raceland Field Office, is Greenville Street, swept roadside ditches. And clean culverts. The Desalmonds Reservoir, clear trees from the reservoir. Charles Avenue right of way, clear trees from the right of way. Supercharge Drive and Thibodeau Street, remove vegetation from the drainage ditch. You'll see on the left the before and on the right the after. And then in the process. This was a job that we completed with in house as well as maintenance contract employees and equipment. Highway 653 swept roadside ditches. If you remember the last council meeting, they had a couple that was, um, had some drainage concerns on Pertweet Lane. This project alleviated. Um, there's still some work to be done on Pertweet Lane and the work has begun, but this was a big uh, part of what was holding the water back. Yeah. Just by cleaning this ditch, we dropped the water 18 inches in that subdivision. Cool. Moving to Lockwood Field Offices, Do French Street, replace collapsed and undersized driveway culvert. Sugar Street swept roadside ditches and clean culverts. Chester Lee removed collapsed landscape culvert. West 11th Street installed culvert at the bank failure. Hamilton Street replaced collapsed driveway culvert. Also Hamilton Street removed collapsed landscape culverts. Moving to Galliana Field Office is West 13th Street, replace collapsed driveway culvert. West 20th Street, replace collapsed driveway culvert. West 79th Street, trim trees. East 94th Street, swept roadside ditches. West 184th Street, swept outfall. And on West 184th Street, we also lowered a driveway culvert. As far as work completed by the maintenance contractor, uh, replaced a broken curb and panel at 209 Highland Oaks Drive. Also replaced broken curb at 363 Highland Oaks Drive. 392 Highland Oaks Drive, replaced broken curb and panel. 163 Highland Oaks, broken curb. 162 Magnolia Bluff, replaced the broken curb as well as 162 Laverne. West 184th Street again, replace the concrete driveway. Green Acre Street, this was a, a large asphalt patch. 309 Cascade Drive, replace cross culvert. And then you'll see where the panels were re-poured. As far as the work completed in the office over the last month, there were no permanent servitudes acquired. Uh, there was one major subdivision inspection and no major subdivision reviews. Two property redivision reviews, 19 culvert permits and six fence permits were issued. 448 work requests were received, 83 permits were reviewed for compliance. 11 jobs were completed by the maintenance contractor. As far as engineering projects, there are currently 25 in the design phase, six projects under construction. Two that are out for bid, which as you heard today, that has been updated to one out for bid and one on hold, and two projects that were recently completed. And with that, I'll entertain any questions.
Questions for Dylan? Mr. Arab, you have the floor first, sir. Yeah, well, I sent you a work request uh, a while back. It's a request from Oxford Santa Ann Hospital for us to do a pedestrian crosswalk right there on uh, Cypress Street. I know we have done them in the past for the schools and stuff like that. Are, are, are we going to do that or where are we at with that? So you emailed that one to me? You emailed that work request to me? I sent it to you while well, I sent it online. Oh, <laughs> online? Okay. I'll follow up with Troy on that tomorrow and see. Um, I do know there was some chatter about a request for that, um, a crosswalk. We're going to have to look into that. That's nothing we've ever done before. Um, we can certainly look into it and see what it is. I know we have put in the priority road sales to have that street uh, painted, like the turning lanes and all painted, that one as well as Acadia. Um, so that was going for a much bigger project. That would be a holdup. It wouldn't happen this year. It would happen next year in the priority road project. But I can see that's something that we've never done before. So I have to have that conversation on if we install crosswalks and what, what's entailed with installing a crosswalk. I don't know who we would permit that by or if that needs to be traffic studied or well, that's I a know, new one. I know we had done it in the past administrations, you know. Uh, Do you know for where? The school, for the school board, you know, somewhere right, right between on Bowie Road. We put one over there. Bowie Road? Okay. And, no, uh, that's going to help. I know they got a lot of doctors and nurses all walking from Acadia Park to the hospital now because they own just about everything in that area. So. They were just. They sent me an email and asked me if we could uh, consider, you know, putting some signs and, and just stripe it across pedestrian crosswalk. Yeah, we'll surely look into it. I'll look up the Boy Road project too and see what we did there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Miss Chasson. Okay. So sometime this morning we had a, a dump truck pass over the Copeland Bridge and take it out of commission. What do we need to do to get cameras up on these bridges, especially these pontoons that we have? Galliano pontoon, the cutoff pontoon is like the only pontoons we have left in the area. I mean, this isn't the first time a big vehicle has passed that shouldn't be passing. Last year there was an 18-wheeler with loaded drill pipe that crossed on the pontoon. I mean, these vehicles should be held responsible for any damage they're doing to our infrastructure. Agreed, and we are certainly working with the sheriff's office on that. We gave them all the information that we had on the dump truck. Unfortunately, we don't have a license plate on it. We know what it looked like. We have colors on it. Um, we've sent that to them. They're looking through their camera system to see if they can't find something. Um, I guess to answer your question on, on cameras on bridges, we've had this discussion on cameras on field offices, bridges, pump stations is just monetarily, you know, can we afford to do it and where does it stop? Um, I don't have a better answer for you on that. We'd love to hold everybody accountable for the damage they do to this kind of stuff, but if we had to put a camera on everything we owned, I don't know, we would be in the camera business. I get that, but a camera's cheaper than a new bridge. I understand, I understand. But if we cameraed everything, we figured it out today, it's like 550 or $600,000 in camera systems. No, we wouldn't have to spend that much. <laughs> We we have we have you know 84 pump stations, six field offices, six movable bridges, uh, 36 parish-owned buildings. It just it start you know where where do we draw the line on it? And then who maintains all of that data, manages it, and everything else? That's a whole nother thing that we have to look at. Server upgrades, hosting that stuff. Do we keep it for 30 days, 15 days? So it is it is very detailed. I'm not telling you we aren't having those conversations. It's just it's a lot. Where do we go? Where do we stop? what's entailed in it. Um, I would love that we had cameras, right? I wish that we had them. But again, you know, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot to chew on just, and we can start, we can start the process. We're just trying to think through it before we just dive into it. Yeah, well the cameras are pretty, in my opinion, cameras are reactionary and the damage is already done. Cause you know, my, Correct. my, my bridge was tore up by 18 wheels over and over and over. My question is though, couldn't we just go ahead and instead do a, a height limitation where we, where we just, where we reduce it? I know the UPS and FedEx and all of them are gonna have problems with it. But at least you would stop the 18 wheelers if you went to a lower, I mean, we talked about it at the Valentine Bridge because I don't know that yeah, I mean, something needs to be done. I just cameras, the damage is already done once it's, and a lot of times they apologize, GPS tells them to cross the bridge, or they're not from here, they're not familiar, what the heck is a floating bridge, they've never seen that before. Um, but I think if we if we put a, a really low height limitation, where it's only small commuter, you know, it, it's gonna eliminate, I know UPS and FedEx and all, but I think that could be an option. Or maybe something hanging from you know, where it hits your vehicle. Agreed, or something. and something with the Cold Blanche Bridge, there's, there's very limited access there, so it's 
but we did talk about that on Valentine. But Valentine has a pretty good approach coming to it. Um, but yeah, we'll look we'll look at that again and see if that's something we can do. I mean, big lights, blinking lights, or something. I know we fought it and fought it, and most of the trucks were coming to me, and so the, uh, the sheriff's office showed up because the bridge tender was scared out of their mind that the bridge was going to flip. Um, so they caught them, but it still was the damage is already done. You know. Anyway. Anyone else have any questions for Dylan? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Department of Public Works. Brings us to item K, questions for the administration. I have one. Um, so I got engaged by, I guess, I don't know if he's a chairman of, of uh, Council on Aging. Um, he had been out of commission for a bit. Talking about, I know we had had this discussion sometime back about LaFouche on the move, the funding that we lost, and trying to keep a few programs going for them. Do we have any update? Um, I know we talked about maybe trying to get something in next year's budget and maybe seeing if there was anything we could do this year. Do we have anything towards that? Like I said, he just engaged me uh, two or three days ago. I think he had been ill, so he's kind of like, hey, do I need to do anything? Where do we stand? It's like, well, I guess it's time for me to poke the administration. <laughs> Mr. President. Yeah, so I, we, we haven't done anything yet. Um, I did engage with Ms. Charlene to try to figure out what they, what they would use the money for. Um, and what I got back was, you know, well, we need money for insurance. We need money for operating supplies. We need money for birthday parties. We need money for, you know, casino trips. We want a puzzle table. We want you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, and some of that stuff we just, we can't give them, right? You know, I don't think we start getting into the business of, of funding insurance for for buildings that we don't own when we can barely afford what we have to pay. Um, so it's something that we've had some internal discussions that we worked through the 25 budget to see what we put back in that fund. Uh, and it's something that we're gonna continue to work through as we put it together. And then I know in the coming weeks, we'll probably, you know, you guys are gonna start hearing from us to have our yearly meetings with you guys to talk about priorities and your capital projects. Um, so I'm sure that'll become a, become a discussion then. So for me, the main thing would be for activities, uh, for them to engage because our recreation districts do not do, and look, I was a, I was a board member for a long time in the recreation district, and we focus mostly on the, on the youth, not so much the, um, the elderly, and that's a problem because and, 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 they do pay into that millage on recreation. So I would just request or respectfully ask that if y'all could look at any kind of recreation dollars that could be funneled for, you know, spearheaded for at least for activities, um, as soon as we can for the council and agent, I would certainly appreciate it. I think everyone else would agree with that. And I think what we'll probably do, Mr. Chairman, is we probably won't, it, it'll be like some of the other programs where we won't just give them a flat, a flat amount, right? If they want to do an activity, then we'll work it with Jennifer where we set a pot of money aside and, and they will come and say, hey, we want to do X. And if it meets the criteria, then we'll go ahead and, and fund it for them. But it's, I don't think, maybe Mr. Lorraine had passed a resolution where he wanted a specific amount given to each one of the, each one of the districts. And I'm just, I'm, based on what I got back when we asked what they wanted the money for, I'm not, I'm not too comfortable just giving them a, a, a full pot of, pot of money. I think you're gonna have to come to us and ask for a specific activity or program or something like that. Understood. I just wanna keep the dialogue going and, and if we could keep moving in the right direction on that, I certainly would appreciate it. If no one else has any questions for the administration, brings us to item L, discussion. Anyone else have any other discussion? Mr. Lorraine, you have the floor, sir. I just sir. wanted to ask Archie something. I think the, the bridge was fixed this afternoon. Yeah. Bridge. Yes, it was. Thank, thanks to, to our, our public works guys and uh, Joe and Ben who jumped on looking at the bridge to see yeah. what exactly was wrong with it. And didn't the one in the Rose break the main, um, over there in the coastal? Yeah, so the West of Rose bridge is out. Um, once again, sent a very snarky email to DOTD. Um, apparently it went out at about nine o'clock last night. It was an electrical issue. Uh, their contractors worked on it throughout the night, went and get some parts. Uh, they're waiting for something else to come in, so hopefully it'll be tomorrow. Uh, but once again, you know, thanks to DOTD for not letting us know the bridge was out. Uh, <laughs> That's why. And we wake up you. to Facebook calls and, and messages wanting to know why the bridge is out. Because still, people think every bridge in Lafouche Parish belongs to us, uh, and that we haven't maintained it, we haven't done this, we haven't done that. But um, it's a it's a state operated facility. Thank and you. For you that, know you know anything about the bridge where I live? So the I've been getting close to two years. So I'll send Jacob another email. Uh, he might not want to talk to me after the one he got this afternoon from me, but the last thing we had gotten from them was, I guess, early July. I know they completed the counterbalance tests, um, and then from that point, they had a couple of structural issues still left to do, and they said a couple of months. So I'm hopeful by Halloween you can cross it. Maybe you can trick or treat on the other side to buy it this year. Well, the last three weeks, I haven't seen any work at all, to be honest with you. And if you want to come give a weenie roast, uh, I got a hole in front of my street that the paint all this disappeared. So maybe we can relook at that. 
East 176. Yeah, thank that, you, man. And I thank you for the notifying everyone on the Bellevue Bridge um, because that was another one of those kind of ridiculous ones where they close the bridge, school starting, middle of the day, only during the work day, and they were, it was to work on the roof, which had nothing to do with the, being, allowing the traffic to pass. So I know we have a state rep that represents us there, but it was we didn't get any representation on that one. Uh, it, it didn't make me feel – so we, we sent an email off saying, hey, you know, why was the bridge closed? Again, you never notified us, and, and their response was, you should go to my DOTD and sign up for the email alerts after the fact right yeah just with school starting it just was absolutely ridiculous i mean it caused it, it it's not just that it's a traffic jam up but it's the the safety of it because we know the mcleod bridge my highest fatality location that you know three just uh, just the other day on a bridge that the state's been supposed to replace now for about 15 years so anyway anyone else have any else on the anything on the discussion mr araby you have the floor sir just a suggestion archie uh with the state bridges, maybe if we could talk to them when one goes out, if we could maybe dispatch our our signs. To, if we got to wait for them, it'd be it'd, the bridge would be done. But if we could dispatch our signs so that the people can see that the bridge is out, you know, like how we won this morning, that all kind of traffic. And if that's the way we could dispatch those uh, lot of signs we got. Yeah, if they would let us know, we'd be more than happy to do that. That I would mean, probably help out. Again, with working with with. With, with the sheriff's office, they have keys to our gate and they could deploy them if, if our guys aren't here yet. Like if it happens late at night, those guys can grab them and move them. They just have to let us know. And I think that's the, what we've tried to get across in the last couple of times it's happened is that, you know, again, I'm not trying to be egotistical here, but you kind of got to let us know. Yeah, yeah have a like, quick yeah. bus to go yeah. do it and waiting on them. Yeah. All right, very good. Brings us to item M, adjournment. On motion by Mr. Perk, second by Mr. Roderick. With no further business, the Lafourche Parish Council regular meeting of August 13, 2024 will be adjourned at 18.31 hours. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Is anyone opposed? Motion passes 7 yeas, 0 nays, 2 absences. Those absences being Councilman Melvin and Councilman Adams.